friends, as our peace gong calls us into worship together. Let us gather ourselves in the spirit of God's holy presence on this Trinity Sunday as Angelina Toledo lights our altar candles. to you in peace. Welcome as we gather on this first Sunday after Pentecost in the wisdom of all that is holy. And today we are celebrating our graduating high school seniors and we come now to worship as we sing our hymn of praise. Holy, 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 I invite all who are able to please rise. Creator God. We come to praise the source of all and in the life. Centering in the life-giving love of the risen Christ. We come to affirm all that He us as one body. Challenging one another to be open to the breathtaking vision of the Holy Spirit. We come to embrace the blessings we have been given as we seek to offer our lives in service and commitment. Thanks be to God, who calls us to this time and place to sing praise and live the witness of justice, love, and peace. Amen. And as God's people on this holy day, let us now be together in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Eternal God, we gather in your holy presence, singing your praise, and seeking to be one in community with you and one another. We confess that we have not always lived with integrity, and too often care more about our own happiness than the basic needs of others. Forgive us our sins and separations, we pray. In your gracious mercy, O God, rule in our hearts and in all the world. Empower us to journey in the path of justice, love, and peace, guided by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, whose body we are in this place. Amen. 
Friends, we have the assurance that nothing will ever separate us from God's love. We are forgiven and we're set free to begin again this brand new day. So it is we give thanks and sing Amen. We praise your name, O oh God. of Jesus. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. May God bless these holy words also to our hearing and understanding. Amen. Will you pray with me? Through your Spirit, O oh God, we are grateful for these words of the Apostle Paul for this holy day, and the words of Jesus as well. And may the words I speak be faithful to their meaning. Amen. Big question. What makes up our true identity? Answers can come in a whole variety of ways. Fingerprints is one answer. I invite you to look at the fingers on your hand. If I put on my magnifier glasses and I squint, I can maybe even see the little grooves that create my fingerprint. <laughs> and try to imagine that my print is like no one else's. No one else's fingerprint is just like yours or mine. Which I always found highly unlikely given the billions or trillions of people born since the beginning of time, but never question God's creativity. Those grooves in our fingers do reveal our true identity. Despite personal denial, assumed names, or changes in our personal appearance resulting from age or disease or plastic surgery or an accident, fingerprints. We're all born with fingerprints. But there's far more that makes up our identity, both here and long after we leave this earth. And what would that be? Soul prints. And how deep the grooves of those soul prints go depends on the depth of our moral character and our values, our compassion, our commitment to justice and integrity and peace and serving others. Character is what creates the unique fingerprint of our soul. A well-developed character is identified by the ruts and the contours that are traced onto the surface of our lives and the depth of our character. And I came across a question. Ever wonder why a smooth, conscience-free con artist is called a slick character? It's because that person has no character. It's too smooth, no guiding virtues etched into the grooves of the spirit. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul links character to our making the hard choices 
hard choices that will make a difference in the lives of those who are hurting or suffering. And, and our character comes from sticking to that kind of inspired stubbornness. Character. It's easy to see how the word character has come to have kind of a double meaning. We speak highly of those who have character. We speak doubtfully, dubiously, about those who are characters. Now, without a doubt, Paul had a prickly character. I recall taking him on many times when I was in seminary because of his macho take on women. But I tried, not too graciously, to put him into the context of his time. If we want to get technical, perhaps instead of smoothing out the contours of our characters, we need to conscientiously commit ourselves to deepening the grooves. As one writer said, our souls should be deeply scratched by the gouged clefts and valleys of our character. It takes a lifetime of experiences for us to create such a rutted and rocky masterpiece of soul prints. And so, we keep on deepening the grooves. Even in the midst of these days, in these days of news that often brings tears or anger, reports from around the country and the world that seem so hopeless and more than daunting, we're often struggling with finding some signs that are good, signs of hope. And I happen to see this very simple story that told about a colleague who was attending a conference on the Georgia coast, and he tells this story in his way. He said, as I was getting off the plane in Savannah, I noticed a man, about eight people in front of me, making his way up the jetway. There was something noticeable about him. In fact, something impossible not to see. As he walked along, just another face in the crowd, he was carrying a sign high above his head, a square yellow sign with big black block letters that said, this is a good sign. And as he walked along, heads turned, smiles broadened. I caught up to him in the baggage claim. <clears throat> we were waiting for our luggage, and there he was, sitting on a bench, holding his sign above his head. I walked over to him, sat down, and said, excuse me, but I've got to ask you, what's with the sign? He looked at me, big smile on his face, and said, here's the thing. There is so much negative energy on the loose these days, Everybody seems to be mad about something. There's so much anger. There's so much hatred. There's just so much. It's not good. Not good. So he said, a while ago, my buddy and I got together and we said, we've got to do something about this. So ever since then, wherever we go, and whatever we're doing, we carry this sign. It's a great way to start some positive energy, some positive conversation. Like when somebody comes up to me at the airport and says, hey, what's with the good sign? Look, he said, I know I can't change the world, I get that. But I also know that I can change a little part of it. The part of it I happen to be in at the moment. So we ask, what is the good sign that we can share with our lives and continue to create the fingerprints of our souls? fingerprint of our soul. This isn't something that we're born with, but it is most certainly something we die with. Certainly Paul was not perfect, and yet he continued to grow in wisdom and endurance and in hope. And certainly he lived a life full of power and worth and virtues that would even earn him the character name of Saint Paul, and keeps us thinking about creating our own soul prints. One of you sent me a story that I know I shared years ago, but one that bears repeating every so often. It's a story that is certainly about soul prints. It's a story about a grandson of slaves, a boy born in a poor neighborhood in New Orleans, known as the back of town. His father abandoned the family when the child was an infant, his mother survived as a woman of the streets, and the boy and his sister had to live with their grandmother who didn't really want them. Early in life, this child proved to be gifted for music, and with three other kids, he sang in the streets of New Orleans. 
His first gains were coins that were thrown to them. A Jewish family named Karnofsky, who had emigrated from Lithuania to the US, had pity for the seven-year-old boy and brought him into their home, initially giving work in the house to feed the hungry child. There he remained and slept in this Jewish family's home where for the first time in his life, he was treated with kindness and tenderness. When he went to bed, Mrs. Karnofsky sang him a Russian lullaby <clears throat> that he would sing with her. And later he learned to sing and play several other Russian and Jewish songs. Over time, this boy became the adopted son of this family. The Karnofskys gave him money to buy his first musical instrument, as was the custom in the whole Jewish tradition. They sincerely admired his musical talent and his endurance and his hope and his perseverance. Later, when he became a professional musician and composer, he used these Jewish melodies in his compositions whenever he would play Go Down Moses, especially. This little black boy grew up and wrote a book about his just saying thank you to the parents and grandparents and the church family for helping be the village to raise these amazing children. Um, I have, there's 14 on my list um, and there's eight of them that were able to come today. The rest are actually working on a Sunday morning. Um, I want to mention that we have a special gift for them. In, it's in a little bag, but inside it, um, I'm so happy that they've made these. Reverend Joy talks about this all the time. We talk about it. We are the church, but this mug says, be the church. So hopefully um, they put this in their room or wherever they can see it often, and it reminds us how as a church and what they've learned all the years during church school that they, there's all different parts of it. We've also had it hanging. So love this gift. And then they're going to get um, a Dunkin' Donut gift card because everybody loves that. And um, a book of devotions. And they're special little devotions of stories that in their young life maybe they have anxiety or fear or they feel excluded or they don't feel perfect. But these are beautiful little stories that can remind them that God is always there and that they are unique and special and worthy. And so um, I've highlighted a few of them. So I love giving them. We've been doing this for several years now, and I love doing that. Let's see, what else do I want to say? Um, I want to remind all of you, I'll let you know, um, all of these children have gone through confirmation, uh, the communion ceremony. They've had outstanding church school attendance. Um, many of them have been teacher assistants. Um, they've joined youth group, vacation Bible school, love that, and they do vacation Bible school year after year. Lots of community service. And also, I want to mention that their parents have served on Christian Ed committees, on different boards, have helped out at coffee hour, and truly have been engaged in our church family and in our church setting. So I am so thankful for that. Um, so I'm going to invite them up. I'm going to call you one by one, and if you can stand up, and then I'll give you your gift, and then I think someone's going to actually take your picture. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to begin with Jack Tao. If you can come up, please. And congratulations to Jack. He's going to be going to UMass Boston for biology and pre-med. And next, I have, we can applaud afterwards. How about that? Um, we have Lauren Keo, who's also going to UMass Boston for English long way up. Um, and we have Courtney Dias, and she is going to the University of New Haven for interior design. Love it. I love design. <laughs> and I also want to recognize in the choir loft, and you can join the crowd, um, Angelina Toledo, and she is going to Wheaton College, and early education and music performance is going to be her studies. And then I am going to recognize J.J. Sobchak, if you can come up. He actually graduated last year, and he's um, going into his second year at Bristol Community College. He actually was um, confirmed with this group. And, and then the next three that I'm going to mention, I just want to say that I've held these three as babies, and they have taught every year in church school since eighth grade, even as a confirmant. They helped out in the summer, um, and then this senior year, they, uh, so I'm going to start with Emma Hindle, and she's going to Bridgewater State University, 
for education. And Emma helped out uh, twice a month and sometimes three times a month this year. So could not do it without her and with all of them, actually. Uh, Melanie Keo, also if you can come up, she did the communion class. And she's going to Bridgewater State University for education. Love it. And then Lily McDonald. Is she here as well? She's going to Roger Williams College for Education. And, and then I'm going to mention the, the rest that weren't able to come, but Ali Faria actually is a good friend of Emma. She's not um, part of our church family. She belongs to another faith community. But again, she's taught every year since uh, eighth grade and helped out particularly this year um, joining Emma to teach. She's going to Clark University. Ashley Silvera is going to St. Michael's. And we have um, Mason Fox is going to Bryant University. And same with Andre Keller is going to Bryant University. Jake Coleman is doing Solar Company Apprentice. And we also have Nick Farrell. So congratulations to all of you. My baby is all grown up. So let me just give you your gifts. They're all the same. So proud of you. We are all so proud of you. You are our children and you're off to the big world. But you're going to come back and see us all the time because I have your number. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you again, your family and parents. Lovely. You may be seated. <laughs> Community that lives out our faith together through all that we do. And yes, Kristen will remember your phone number and she will get in touch with you. I don't know how she does it. She's always texting everybody at any time of day or night. So she will continue to monitor you and make sure that everything is okay. And as part of our mission concern for the environment, we do continue to collect your Massachusetts bottles and beans. And our food pantry is now located on the porch off the county street parking lot. Anyone in need can stop by at any time to take what they do need. And we can always use some more non-perishable food. And as you leave today and every Sunday, you will see the Haiti bucket at the top of the ramp. Please feel free to drop any change or bills so that we can continue to collect and forward funds to our friends in need in Haiti. And continue to check out my emails for our list of prayer concern names, our YouTube video link, and all of our upcoming events. And always check out our Facebook page, which does get updated at least twice a week. And there are many photos from last, last week's confirmation service on Facebook right now. And Vacation Bible School is scheduled for August 1st to 5th. Um, for preschool through grade six, um, this is a deal. It's $25 for the entire week, and that's from 8.45 in the morning until 12.15. Um, uh, Kristen is offering an extended day option up to 5.15 each day, and that would be $15 per day. And we do have scholarships available. We never want to turn anybody away. This is a really fun week, so if you have anybody in that age group, we do want them to come and attend. And they can also invite a friend. You don't have to be a member of the church. And I know some children, some ages, are, they're, you know, a little weary of coming alone and they want to have a friend with them. So please invite a friend. Um, registration is required, so you can get that information from Kristen. And if anyone is joining us today for the first time, welcome and on your way out. We do have a guest book over in the corner. We do ask you to complete that if you, if you could, please. Um, and also, we are not passing the collection plate yet, so we do leave it on the table for you to either um, donate when you come in or when you leave, if you, if you wish to do that. And your pledge envelopes for next year, if you are not pledging electronically, are on the table over there. Evelyn will be there. She might have um, handed some out already this morning when you walked in, but they will also be there for when you leave. And if you happen to see a name um, on the table of a neighbor or a friend, and they're not here today, just take it and drop it off with them. That would be very helpful. 
And if I were to invite you to come and have strawberry shortcake, would you come? <laughs> of course you would come. Well, that's exactly what we are doing. We are serving Four Town Farm strawberries, which just came out this week, homemade biscuits and whipped cream right after our annual meeting on Sunday, June 26th. So all you have to do is attend the, sur the, the meeting after the church service and you will get as much uh, strawberry shortcake as you would like. Um, so, and there is a sign up list over in the hall for anyone who wishes to make uh, biscuits. The recipe will be provided so we're all making the same ones. Um, or if you want to assist with setup or preparing, preparing the food or clean up uh, with the strawberry shortcakes. But we do hope, and to be very serious, we do have an annual meeting, and again, it's once a year. This is our church. We, you know, we set everything up and we vote on everything. So it is very important for you to come and be part of that. And so, and the meetings don't usually last that long. It's, I mean, if it's an hour, it's usually not even an hour. So um, information will be there. There are um, two bylaw changes which I put out yesterday in my email. And as you leave church today, if you did not get my email and you would like a hard copy, I have them with me. So you can take them when you leave today. And uh, please enjoy your week. Be safe. Continue to reach out for others. So very important. And now please welcome and enjoy the choir singing Rain Down. Thank you.
giving thanks for the gift of God's Spirit among us. We remember all of those who are on the prayer concerns that Donna sends out each week, and uh, prayers especially this week for the this lawyer's family, uh, as Paul, his brother, Ray's brother Paul, will. Um, the service will be this coming Saturday at 10.30 here in this sanctuary. Let us gather our hearts now in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Life-giving and loving God, giver of wisdom, source of strength, we give thanks for your surrounding presence this day. Be strength and comfort for all those who need you most. Be with all those who are grieving and with all who yearn for your healing power. Be with those who need peace and patience, calm or comfort, assurance and reassurance. And we are so grateful and thankful, O oh God, for all those who are caring for others in so many different and essential ways. We pray that you'll give each of us the courage, courage and the guidance that we need to gracefully live into each new day with, with hope and endurance. We give thanks that you reveal new insights and give us energy and empathy to love and to serve. We pray for our country and the changes that are crucial for peace and justice in our land and out into our world. May we hold fast to the challenge of allowing the love and peace of Christ to inform our every day. And on this holy day, O oh God, may we come to our table to receive the bread and the cup as a gift of your amazing grace. And we pray that you'll empower us to remember that each of us, each of us is a gift, a gift of your grace, called to be Christ's presence out into our world, loving in word and deed and commitment. And we ask now, gracious God of life, that you will bless the cup and the bread and each of us receiving in the holy name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray together to say, our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we come now bringing all that we are, and all that we hope to be as followers of Jesus the Christ. We come remembering how on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and giving thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this always, remembering me. In the same manner also, Jesus took the cup, and giving thanks, blessed it, and said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, let us share the bread and the cup as we receive. Amen. <laughs>
we give thanks. Life-giving and loving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us at this, your table. And we pray that you will continue to guide us in Christ's love through the days ahead. In that holy name we pray. Amen. And let us sing together our closing hymn and invite all who are able to rise. together our words of parting. We go now uh, with the holy presence of God embracing us, with the love of Christ guiding us, and the Spirit's power strengthening us. By faith we will bring the courage to witness and serve in all we do and say. Amen. And let us sing together our song of parting. peace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us as we go forth to love and to serve and create fingerprints of the soul. Amen. Amen. Amen.